Thanks for clicking on this video. If you want to follow along, the links to the companion worksheet are in the description below. Today we're talking about the multiplication principle. And so this is talking about how many different outcomes are possible when you have multiple different uh, ingredients, as it were, or different conditions. So what we want to do is we want to look at how many different outcomes are possible. So for the first one, it says an ice cream stand offers four flavors, strawberry, chocolate, vanilla, and mint chocolate chip. So we have four flavors. But then it says the ice cream can be served in a sugar cone, waffle cone, and a cup. And the flavors have no impact on, the, uh, on how it's served. So that means strawberry, chocolate, vanilla, and mint can be served in a sugar cone. That's four ways. Strawberry, chocolate, vanilla, and mint can be served in a waffle cone. That's four more ways. Strawberry, chocolate, vanilla, and mint can be served in a cup. So that's 12 ways. And the way we think about that is we say, well, there's four different flavors times three different methods of serving it. So there are 12 different outcomes. Number two, a jewelry store sells earrings, rings, or necklaces with either a ruby, a sapphire, an emerald, or a diamond. So we have this type of jewelry, earrings, rings, or necklaces, and then these stones, ruby, sapphire, emerald, or diamond. So that's 3 times 4 is 12. 12 different pieces that you could get. Ear 3 with a ruby, 3 with a sapphire, 3 with an emerald, and 3 with a diamond. Number 3. The chess club must decide when and where to meet for practice. The possible days are Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. So we have three different possible days. Times, 3, 4, or 5 p.m. So we have three different times. So we multiply by three. But then it also says there are 10 classrooms available. So we multiply by 10. Because you multiply by every single different thing that offers more options. So different days offer us options, different times, different classrooms. So we multiply them all and we get 90. Number four, six students have to sit in six chairs in a row. Now, this is gonna relate back to the factorial video because once you sit a student down, that student can't be seated again. So if I have six chairs, I can put six students in the first chair. But then once I put the first student in that chair, then there's only five students in the second chair. And then once I put those two, I can only put four different students in the third chair. And then three students in the fourth chair, two students in the fifth chair, and then by the time you're done, there's no choice, you just have one student. And so this is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And if you saw the factorial video, that would just be 6 factorial. Or, if you'd prefer, that would equal 720 if you multiplied them. Now on the second page, it says a math quiz has five multiple choice questions. Each question has four options, A, B, C, and D. Now each question has doesn't have an effect on the other questions. And for each question, you could have either A, B, C, or D. So for question one, I could pick, I have four options to pick. Now unlike the last one, where once you sat a student, you couldn't seat them again, if I picked letter A for question one, I could pick letter A for question two. So I still have four options for the second question. And I still have four options for the third, and for the fourth, and for the fifth. So that means that I have four times four times four times four times four, which is four to the fifth, or 1,024. Number six, a basketball player attempts 20 free throws. Each attempt results in a score or a miss. All right. Now, I don't have to draw them all out because there's quite a few, but for each one, I either score the I either score the free throw or miss it. So for each one, there's two outcomes. And so if we do this, this is going to happen 
20 times. So that means this is 2 to the 20th power. And so there are 1,048,576 different outcomes because the first one could be a hit or miss, the second one could be a hit or miss, and so on and so on. Number seven, a password must contain between four and eight numbers or letters. So two things here. One, we're not told how many it has to be. It could be anywhere between four and eight. So we have to consider that. Then also numbers or letters. Well, there's 10 numbers and 26 letters, so there's 36 overall to choose from. Now, thing to be aware of is repeats are possible. So let's think about this. For a password that's four characters long, I could put 36 different things for the first slot, 36 for the second, 36 for the third, and 36 for the fourth. So for a password that's four characters long, there's 36 to the fourth power number of ways to do it. Now if I have five characters, it's the same thing except I have one extra slot. So that means it's 36 to the fifth power. And then if I kept going with this, if I follow this pattern, if there are six characters, it's 36 to the sixth. If it's seven characters, it's 36 to the seventh. And if it's eight characters, it's 36 to the eighth power. So, now, these can't happen at the same time. And so when I count these, I have to add them up. So 36 to the fourth, plus 36 to the fifth, plus 36 to the sixth, plus 36 to the seventh, plus 36 to the eighth power. And I'm not going to use a calculator because that's going to be a very, very large number, and it's much simpler just to write it exactly like this. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more, click the subscribe button. To support the channel, click the links in the description below. Thanks for watching. Remember, the best way to understand something is to do it.